welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming my December wrap up and I've honestly been dreading making this video because I read 20 books this month and I know that this is going to take me so long to film and to talk about all these books and I'm actually excited to talk about all the books in this video. It's just it's going to take me a while and I've been dreading it so let's just get right into it. So the first book that I read in December was actually a reread and that was Dumplin by Julie Murphy. If you guys watch all my wrap-ups then you will know that I read this a couple months ago. I read it again. So if you don't know it, this is one of my favorite books of all time. If we follow our main character Willow Dean who is a self-proclaimed fat girl and she's always been pretty confident in her body until she starts this little romance with her co-worker named Bo and she starts to feel self-conscious of herself whenever he touches her and this leads her to join a beauty pageant in her town that her mom runs and it's like a super famous event in their town and she decides to enter the pageant to kind of prove to everyone and to herself that fat girls can be beautiful too and it's a beautiful story and so I reread it for the second time this year absolutely adored it um, and I actually annotated it this time around um, I didn't re-tab it I just annotated it but I'm really excited although if you guys know me at all you know I love this book I love the characters I don't need to say anything else because I just keep saying the same things but this book is amazing I highly recommend it it's really good. So obviously I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. That's just a given. Next book that I read was The Choice by Nicholas Sparks. I've been reading this book for two years on and off and I'm so happy that I finally finished it. I didn't love it and I think partially it's because it took me so long to read it and it like details were just lost and I was really confused when I jumped back into the story. I think I was about halfway through the story when I jumped back in. And I just forgot so many details and characters and I was so confused. Um, but I know that I love the movie. I really enjoyed the movie and so I feel like if I were to read this in one go I'd probably enjoy it a lot more. But yeah I don't really have a lot to say about it. I felt really disconnected from everything because I don't, I didn't read it all in like a short span of time um so I also decided not to rate this book because I finished it and I just had no idea what to rate it and I just feel like it's unfair to the novel to rate it because of the way that I read it so I just decided to leave this one unrated so third book that I read in December was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky I tabbed this book I annotated this book. So uh, the last time I read this book was in 2014. This was a reread for me. Um, so it's been four years since I read it and I knew going into it that I prefer the movie. Um, for some reason I just connect to the movie so much more than I connect to the book. But going into this reread I thought it was a favorite book and I don't quite know if I would call it a favorite book anymore. I don't know. Like I was enjoying it while I read it. I read it really quickly. Um, I just don't, I don't know, like there's something about it that I just didn't connect to it in the way that I was wanting to and in the way that I connect to the film. Obviously, I still loved it. There's a lot of tabs in here um, and I did make quite a few annotations and it did hit me hard at some parts, um, but I just didn't connect to it in the way that I remembered that I did or in the way that I thought that I would. Um, so this was a bit disappointing, um, but I still adore it. Julia, don't kill me. I still love The Perks Being a Wallflower. Uh, I did really enjoy annotating it. It did um, enhance the experience and did add something to it for me, um, but I ended up giving this one a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. Again, if you watch all of my wrap-ups, then you will know that I read this at the beginning of the year. I think I read it in January, and I listened to it uh, via audiobook, and I didn't really love it. This was the second Adam Silvera book that I'd ever read. I had loved History is All You Left Me and so I was like oh I should love this one as well. It was his debut and I didn't love it the way that I wanted to and so I thought that it was because of the audiobook. I thought the audiobook created this distance between me and the story and the characters and that's why I didn't love it. But this book is basically set in this near future society where there is this thing I almost said Death Cast. That's his other novel. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm doing real well today. This book is set in a near future society where there is this thing called the Lateo Institute. And basically what this institute does is you go there and you can have your memories erased. Our main character, Aaron Soto, has known um, somebody who has gone through the Lateo procedure and it kind of intrigues him, but it also seems too good to be true. So we kind of follow him through the story uh, as he like... I don't know how to describe this book. Basically, his father committed suicide and 
he kind of goes through life with the support of his girlfriend and he ends up meeting this boy named Thomas and he ends up starting to gain feelings for him and realizing that he's gay and he kind of has to come to terms with the fact that he is gay and how that kind of fits into his life and into his world with his girlfriend and all of his friends and everything. I don't know, it was a really cool concept but it fell flat and so I reread it um, in hopes that I would like it more the second time around um, by physically reading it and I do have some tabs in here so there were parts that I did um, enjoy but overall I didn't like the characters I liked the plot um, I liked the whole concept of the world and um, of the Lateo Institute I thought I found it very intriguing but the characters just I don't know I didn't connect to them I didn't really care about any of them um, I cared about Aaron our main character a little bit but not enough I didn't really like Thomas I didn't like um, Aaron's girlfriend I just didn't really connect to any of these characters. And I am a character driven reader. I need to care about the characters in order to love a book. Um, but this book did get some points for an interesting plot. Um, I just feel like it would have been so much better if I cared about the characters. So unfortunately through this reread I just didn't enjoy it like I wanted to enjoy it. I landed on a 3 out of 5 stars. which Although I did enjoy it a bit more this second time around I still gave it the same rating of 3 out of 5 stars because I just didn't enjoy it enough to bump up the rating in any sort of way. The next book I'm actually really excited to talk about and that is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I read this book with Peyton and Julia during our Jingle-a-thon. This was our group book for the readathon, and I loved this book. <laughs> so five years ago our main character Holly Chase was that year's Scrooge um, and she was visited by the three ghosts, Ghosts of Christmas Past, Present, and Future and she was given an opportunity to change her ways and be a better person. She decided not to take it. She didn't believe them. She was like, this is a hoax, blah, 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 you suck, basically. <laughs> and so she didn't change her ways. And so she ended up dead just like the ghost of Christmas future told her that she would end up. And she ends up being recruited by Project Scrooge to become one of the ghosts. So she now becomes the latest ghost of Christmas past and has to help new Scrooges to change their ways and that's kind of her punishment in a way. Um, and so we follow her as she deals with this year's Scrooge and there's romance and it's super cute. So I know that Holly Chase is supposed to be an unlikable character and there are definitely moments where I really didn't like Holly Chase. But I ended up liking her, and I don't know if everyone else is like this who read this book, but I ended up really enjoying Holly Chase. I really enjoyed the romance in this novel. I thought that it was super cute. I loved the whole atmosphere of this book. It was perfect read at Christmas time. Obviously, it is a sort of Christmas Carol retelling, or not, not it's not a retelling. Everyone says that it's a retelling, but it's really not. Um, we're not retelling the story of Scrooge. We're kind of just like continuing it. I just really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really cute, really fun. I'm definitely going to be rereading it every single Christmas and I highly recommend it. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was actually an audiobook and it was Crest by Marissa Meyer. This is another reread for me. I've been listening to the series on audio recently and I finally got Crest in from the library in December and I listened to it and I loved it. This is one of my favorites in the series. I would say it's my second favorite, um, but I love it because we finally, finally get properly introduced to Cress. We get more of Thorn and kind of get deeper into his character and everything just kind of gets more intense in this book. I just love this world and these characters so, so much and it was just really fun being able to re-experience the book that really made me fall in love with this series. I, just, I love it so intensely. It's really, really good um, and I'm really happy that I uh, reread it this year. Obviously, I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. Okay, I'm not that excited to talk about this next one, but the second seventh book that I read in December was Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. I didn't love this book as much as everyone else has been loving it. Um, I obviously still really enjoyed it. I do love the whole Shadowhunters world and I do love these characters, obviously. I feel like because I read this for the first time so long after it was released, it allowed for all this hype to build up and all of these expectations to be set and everyone described this book and this ending as utterly heartbreaking and it would like shatter my soul and so I was expecting um, for something really big um, and for a character that I was in love with to die and that didn't happen um, and so I was kind of like left like oh that wasn't as big as I was thinking it would be so if I didn't have those expectations if I had just read this when it had first come out before people had read it 
then I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more and have been affected by it a lot more, but I just wasn't. Um, I also found this book to be a bit slow going into it, and this is something that I didn't experience with Lady Midnight, although I have heard that other people felt that way about Lady Midnight. But I felt that this book was a little slow. It took me a while to get into it, and I didn't really start to get into it until maybe the second half of the book. Overall, I did enjoy the story and the characters. I'm disappointed that I didn't love this as much as everyone else, but obviously I still enjoyed it. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the original screenplay by JK Rowling. Um, this was a, another reread for me. Guys, I have a problem with rereading books, um, which is something that I've really realized this year, but it's fine. Yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about this screenplay. Um, I've read it before. It's exactly word for word the same as the movie. Um, obviously I enjoy reading the little descriptions and stuff that we don't necessarily get to see in the film. That's enjoyable um, and I do love this film so obviously I had a good time reading this. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5. I really have nothing to say about it. <laughs> the next book that I read was another audiobook and it was Landline by Rainbow Rowell. Again a another reread. My TBR is screaming at me right now. <laughs> So I read this book a few years ago, absolutely loved it. It follows our main character, Georgie McCool, who is kind of a workaholic in a way. She is a TV script writer, um, and she's working on this really popular show, I can't remember what it's called, um, but she gets this opportunity to uh, write scripts for the show of her dreams, um, the show that she's been writing and creating with one of her best friends, and she gets the opportunity to have a meeting and pitch it to this, like, director dude, and it takes place around Christmas time, which is why I read it this month, and she's supposed to go to her husband's mom's house for Christmas and she has to cancel on him um, and her children so she can stay at home and write these scripts. And so it's kind of caused this tension between her and her husband because she's ditching them at the holidays. And so she kind of goes through all of this like turmoil of like what's happening with her marriage. Her mom thinks that Neil, her husband, has left her um, because he w went to his mom's house without Georgie. And she ends up picking up the landline phone at her mom's house to call her husband. Um, and she ends up getting her husband from the past on the other line. And she ends up talking to him a lot. And that's kind of what this book is about. I really enjoyed this book. I love the characters. I love the story. The humor is everything. It was a really adorable story. I love seeing the conversations between Georgie and her husband from the past um, and it's just like a really interesting dynamic and it's just like a really unique and interesting um, concept and story and I just... I had a really fun time listening to this audiobook. I gave this one a 4.75 out of 5. I should probably bump that up to a 5 because now that I'm thinking about it like I can't think of one thing that would stop me from giving it a 5. The next book that I read was Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, the original screenplay by J.K. Rowling. So I read this in hopes that it would make me enjoy the film a bit more and like give me like a better understanding of what was going on during that movie because it was such an overstuffed plot um, that I didn't really know what was going on half the time and so I was hoping that by reading the screenplay I would get a better understanding I didn't really. Um, this didn't really fix any of the problems that I had. It didn't really help me understand anything. I do have to say though that by reading the story it did kind of feel less overstuffed, sort of. Not fully, but, but um, it did feel a bit easier to follow by reading it um, in a screenplay form. But um, one of the problems that I had with the film that the plot was a bit inconsistent and things tended to be forgotten and like never mentioned again and I still obviously had that problem with the screenplay and it kind of just made me notice it more because names stopped popping up um, and it was just easier to keep track of the things that were forgotten which really bothered me. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. The next book that I read was another reread. Are we surprised? No, we're not. It was In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel. So I think either I genuinely didn't enjoy this book the second time around as much as I did the first time, or I've just become more stricter with the way that I rate books, but I did, I did end up giving this lower. I think I gave it a 4 out of 5 last time I read it, 
or a 5 out of 5. I think it was probably more a 4 or 4.5. But this time I gave it lower. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, it still was like an enjoyable story. If you don't know what this is about, it's basically about our main character, Anda. And this woman comes to her school and tells her about this video game called Course Gold Online. And it's a multiplayer role-playing game. And she let, her mom lets her play this game and she ends up falling in love with it and this is where she spends most of her free time and that's basically the best way that I can describe this book to you or this graphic novel to you. Um, so it's an enjoyable story. I really like the artwork um, in it but overall I just I don't love graphic novels. I really try to but I just don't. The next book that I read was My True Love Gave It To Me 12 Holiday Stories edited by Stephanie Perkins. I didn't really like this. <laughs> I was really excited to get to the short story collection because it's Christmassy. I've been wanting to read it ever since it came out, I think back in like 2015 maybe. I didn't like most of the stories. I have tabs in here where each of the stories starts and I have my ratings for each of the stories. And honestly most of them were between 1 and 3 stars I think. Most of them I really didn't like. Quite a few of them I actually hated. Um, and it really annoyed me. And I also could not finish the last story, but I still considered this a completed book for the month because I read through most of them. But the last story was Lainey Taylor's. I really don't like Lainey Taylor. It's nothing against her or anything. I just don't really like her stories or her writing style. It's just not for me. It's not my kind of not my cup of tea. Um, so I ended up DNFing her story, but I just didn't really enjoy it. I didn't connect to any of them. It, <laughs> I ended up giving this anthology a 2.85 out of 5 stars. The next book that I uh, read was actually another audiobook and it was Noggin by John Corey Whaley. It takes place in a near future society where they have um, figured out how to kind of bring back dead people in a way. So what they do is they cut your head off if you're like sick and like about to die like our main character has cancer and so they asked him if he wanted to volunteer for this procedure, so he said yes. So they cut his head off, froze it and preserved it, um, and then five years later they finally had the technology and the capability of following through with the procedure. So they attach his head to somebody else's body. Now he's alive again. Um, so he has to try and find a way to fit into this world five years later. Because for him, it's only, like, it only feels like it's been a couple of weeks. It feels like no time has passed for him. Basically, it feels like he took a long nap um, and now he's back. And so it kind of is jarring for him to see that his family um, has been mourning him for the last five years um, and has kind of gotten rid of everything in his room and have kind of started to move on, um, thinking that it, he was never going to come back. Um, his girlfriend has moved on and now has a fiancé. His friends are older, not in high school anymore, um, and he's still stuck as a 16-year-old boy and kind of has to deal with how he fits in the world now and if it was even worth um, coming back if things are never going to be the way that they once were. I actually really enjoyed this story and I was pleasantly surprised because I thought that I wasn't going to love it as much as I was hoping that I would, um, but I actually did really enjoy it. I had a pretty good time. I liked the humor. Um, I did like the characters. Um, I'm not fully connected or like obsessed with them. Like I said, I don't remember any of their names, but I did just have like an overall good time with this book. I don't think it's a book that I'll ever purchase and add to my collection because I just don't care about it that much, um, but it was a fun story. So I gave this one a 3.85 out of 5. The next book that I read was Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. This is another reread. I enjoy most of these stories. I enjoy the first story, which is Maureen Johnson's story, and I like the last story, which is I, Lauren Miracle. Um, John Green's story is not my favorite. I do like the end of his story, but I do prefer the other one. So this one is basically just about these um, three different sets of characters on Christmas Eve, and there's this big storm going on, and it all kind of intertwines um, in the last story and they all kind of meet and we figure out how all these stories connect. Um, overall I gave this one a 4 out of 5. It was just a fun holiday story and I am excited for the adaptation that I think is coming out um, on Netflix next year or is it this year? It might be this year. I don't know.
I'm really excited to talk about this next one. This is my 15th book of the month and it was another reread. We're not surprised anymore. Um, it was Unite Me by Tahara Mafi. This includes the two novellas, um, Destroy Me and Fracture Me. So Destroy Me is in Warner's point of view and I think it takes place between Shatter Me and Unravel Me and then we have Fracture Me which is in Adam's point of view which takes place I believe between Unravel Me and Ignite Me. I basically started it and I was like I think I'm gonna annotate this because I just like read something and I was like I think I, I think I need to annotate this. And this is one of the most fun times I've ever had annotating a story. There were some annotations that I did in this book that just really made me laugh and I just had a really fun time rereading this. I think I had more fun reading it this time than I did the first time that I read it um, because of the annotating and my own little jokes that I put in there that I think are hilarious. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 obviously. I had a really great time. The next book is Chaotic Good by Whitney Gardner. This book is basically about our main character. Cameron and she is a cosplayer and she's hoping to get into this costume design program and so she's trying to create her portfolio of all the cosplays that she's done but she starts to get hate online on her blog for when she starts uploading photos of her and her cosplays um, because it came out that she didn't actually like or watch or read whatever she was cosplaying as, she just liked their costumes and so she started to get a bunch of hate thrown at her. Um, and she also deals with sexism in comic book stores. So she goes into comic book stores to look at the comics to get inspiration for her cosplays and there's this guy at the comic book store who treats her like she is not allowed to read comic books, like girls can't read or understand comic books and so he kind of takes her to like the girls section and is like here this is where you should be not in like the Marvel Universe section and that really annoys her so one day she decides to dress up as a boy and kind of cosplay as a boy going into the comic book shop to see if she'd be treated differently and she was and she ends up connecting with the guy who works at the comic book store different guy, the one that didn't judge her before, and um, she ends up joining his D&D &D game um, and plays a lot of Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons, um, and she kind of just has to deal with that. It's an enjoyable story. I didn't absolutely love it. I feel like I would have enjoyed this book a lot more if I had an underlying knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons going into this book, but I didn't. Um, the only thing I know about Dungeons and Dragons is what's in Stranger Things. So there was a lot of talk of Dungeons and Dragons in this book that I just couldn't comprehend. It went poof right over my head because I know nothing about that game. I feel like if there was less of that I would have enjoyed that more but I feel like if you love D&D or know a lot of stuff about D&D you'd be able to get more out of that part of the story than I could but I did enjoy the romance. I did like the characters. I did like the whole idea of her trying to fight back against the sexism um, surrounding the comic book store. So yeah overall it was just a fun read. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, the 17th book that I read was A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahara Mafi. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so this book came out a few months ago. Why am I about to cry? Why do I get so emotional when I talk about a favorite book? Oh my god, there's literal tears in my eyes right now. That's messed up. Obviously, I really loved this book. Oh my god, this book for Christmas. If you saw my Christmas haul, you would have seen that. Um, I loved this book. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it, but I tabbed it. A whole heck of a lot. Like, I used so many tabs throughout this book. I read it in one sitting. I actually read Chaotic Good and A Very Large Expensive Sea in the same day. If you don't know what this book is about, it is about our main character, Shireen, and she is a Muslim teen living in a post 9 11 world. This book takes place in 2002, so only a year after the events of 9 11, and she kind of has to deal with the racism and stuff that comes along with being Muslim, wearing a hijab, and going to high school, and kind of has to deal with all of these, um, comments um coming from her classmates and like these snide remarks that they make at her and she's kind of really mad at the world kind of hates everyone um and is very closed off until she meets a boy named ocean who is her lab partner and he kind of opens her up a little bit and it's really adorable they start this really cute romance and i just i loved it this book 
hit me really hard and open up my eyes to what it is like to be a Muslim teen in a post 9-11 world. It broke my heart. There were so many things. I want to cry. Um, there were so many things that happened in this book that really broke my heart and it opened, it really opened my eyes like the hate you give to things that I'm never going to be able to experience myself and I'm very privileged to never have to experience anything like that. I do know that. Um, it just, oh. It broke my heart and made me really angry at just like in the hate you give because I just don't understand people's, people's uh, way of thinking. I really don't understand it. Um, but yeah, this book was really beautiful. Um, obviously, Tahara Mafi is a queen with words and just did an amazing job. This was her first published contemporary novel and she freaking nailed it. She did such a beautiful job with it and I can't wait to hopefully get more contemporaries out of her, maybe. Heart would not stop fluttering the entire time I was reading this book. It was so adorable. My heart was just like dancing in my chest. I don't know what it was doing, but it was having a good old party inside here <laughs> throughout those books because it was just so adorable and so cute and I highly recommend this story. Obviously I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. It deserves nothing less. It was amazing. The um, 18th book that I read was The Storied Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. Another reread. Um, this was a favorite book of mine. I don't know if I would still consider it um, to be a favorite book after this reread. Um, I annotated this one. This is my second copy. So I do have annotations uh, going throughout the book. I'm trying to find a page that has a lot. Um, so yeah, I had a good time annotating and I feel like that definitely added to the experience of reading this book. Um, if you don't know what this story is about, it is about a bookkeeper, a bookstore owner named AJ Fickery and he is a very closed off, kind of cynical person. His wife died um, not that long ago, I think a couple years prior to the book starting. One day his collection of Edgar Allan Poe poems goes missing and it's this really rare um, collection of poems that was never published or something it's really rare and he was hoping to keep it so that he could sell it in an auction and like retire I think um, it was like one of the only things keeping him going and it goes missing one day and um, I don't really know how to describe this book but a mysterious package um, arrives at his bookstore one day and that turns his world around and kind of just changes everything. It's just like, it is a heartwarming story. I do love this story. I do love the characters, um, but for some reason I just didn't fully connect or jive with the story in the same way. Um, but obviously I still really adore this book. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5. 19th book that I read was, um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. Um, this is just the textbook of Fantastic Beasts. It's what Newt Scamander is working on throughout the film. I feel very meh about it. I feel like, um, I only really cared about the creatures that we saw in um, Harry Potter or in the Fantastic Beast films. Um, I didn't really care about any of the other ones. I found myself kind of skimming over them and not fully paying attention. I did really enjoy the annotations made by Harry and Ron throughout the book because this is Harry's personal copy. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 because I just felt very meh about it. The last book that I read um, in the year 2018 and in December was The Bronze Key by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Magisterium series. Um, I really enjoy this series. I listened to this one on audio. If you don't know what this series is about, it is about a boy named Cal. First book, he's supposed to take a tr uh, test to get into this magic school, the Magisterium. Um, it's called the Iron Trial, but he doesn't want to get into the school because his dad has kind of put in the these preconceived notions into his head that this is a bad school, killed his mother, you don't want to go here. So he tries to fail the test but he fails at failing and he gets into the school. This book was really enjoyable. It wasn't my favorite in the series um, but the ending was really intense and I really enjoyed the ending. Um, but I do like these characters. I like the story. I like the world. I'm very excited to see how this plays out into the next book. I think Emma Books said that the fourth one, The Silver Mask, is her favorite in the series so far um, which is really assuring us. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5. I did still really enjoy it so. Holy crap we're done. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thank you guys for watching. Give it a huge thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Comment down below what you guys read in the month of December and also let me know how many books you read in the year 2018 because I'd really love to know. The subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed already. I'd really love to have you join my little family and it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.